Hi, this is Chris Howard, host of Plugged In with Chris Howard. BetOnline is your bracket headquarters for this season with the best bracket contests, odds, and lines right up to the national championship game. BetOnline is your number one source for all your college basketball wagering. Head to BetOnline today. Stay updated on all the action. BetOnline, the game starts here. Thanks for listening to CarCast on Podcast One. 80% of Americans found something they can all agree on. America is falling apart. How did we get here and how do we get out of it? Newsflash, media plays a central role in both. Check out our new podcast, Media Roundtable. We'll talk to media moguls, top hosts on both sides of the aisle, and the people who pay for it all, the sponsors. Media Roundtable is not just a podcast. It's a movement to restore trust and civility to the national conversation, and we need you to be a part of it. Look for Media Roundtable wherever you get your shows and subscribe now. Hey guys, welcome to CarCast. You know, Dodge was ranked number one for initial quality and best driver appeal for mass market brands by J.D. Power. It's the first U.S. brand ever to be ranked number one in initial quality and appeal in the same year. So see your local Dodge dealer or visit Dodge.com to schedule a test drive. All right. And in this episode, we're going to get into that Ford Lightning. I can tell you when it debuts. We'll also uh, tell you about some spy vid from uh, on the new Z06, we'll get into that uh, that flat plane crank and yeah, maybe a little reminiscing on uh, Gone in sixty seconds. Maybe just a <laughs> just little. Just a little. First, JB Weld DIYers and pros have trusted JB Welds JB Weld for fifty years plus for projects big and small. Use uh, by the way, it's the world's strongest bond. We're proud to have JB Weld. Epoxy Adhesive is a sponsor. I personally know the owner and have hung out with these guys, like I said, and uh, we've always used their product, and now we use it even more. I use it to fix Sonny's shoe, and Stromer used it to uh, fix his tray up in his uh, wet saw. J.B. Weld just acquired Herculiner, by the way, the original DIY bed liner. So if you're looking for the world's strongest truck bed liner, Herculiner, has you covered, right, Matt? Yeah, JB Weld is available at jbweld.com, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts, O'Reilly, Amazon, Michaels, and more. And remember, JB Weld epoxy products are proudly made in the USA. Get it, put it in your kitchen drawer, and put it in your garage because uh, this stuff works and they make every variety of adhesive now. <laughs> No choice but to get on a mandate. You get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. Welcome to CarCast. I'm Matt Krolz. Matt, the moderator, D'Andrea, over there. How you doing? Good. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Good. Uh, let's see. I got a email from Bruce Myers talking about the uh, Father's Day Beverly Hills Parade. Oh, yeah. Which is um, going to be... Uh, I think the 20th of June, and they're not doing a car show. They're doing like a parade. And uh, it's all, you know, run by the cops. And he said, bring whatever car you want. And then uh, I thought, well, what does that mean? And he just it just said, the crazier, the better. So he, he, he said, bring any car from your collection, and the crazier, the better. So I think, um, I think that means any car. So uh, I guess we can uh, think about something crazy to bring out because I think the cops are just blocking off right, everything. Right, so you can parade like, like a, a race car or something yeah, like that. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. That could be kind of interesting. I mean, cooling issues aside. <laughs> cooling issues aside. That was the first thought <laughs> that ran through my mind was cooling issues. Uh, yeah, so it might be fun to take something out there and uh, show it off on uh, Father's Day. Yeah. Um, Phil's in studio. Where's Phil? <laughs> I saw that. He's roaming around. Let me tell you guys real quick about J.B. Weld. J.B. Weld is available at jbweld.com, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts, O'Reilly, uh, Amazon, Michaels, and more. And remember, J.B. Weld epoxy products are proudly made in the USA. I feel like Phil's getting bigger. <laughs> I don't know. I think you're getting smaller. <laughs> that's, that's very – it's very likely – um, I don't know if you saw this, but um, they are going to be making a feature film about racing car driver Janet Guthrie. 
Oh, really? She ran NASCAR and Indy and uh, Indy 500. Mm-hmm. I think she placed 10th at the Indy 500, and then it was, wasn't was until Danica Patrick mm-hmm. you know, raced and, and got 5th. You know that another female was was running it, and I want to say she ran it like 1970, something mm-hmm. around there. Mm-hmm. And she's going to be played by oh, Caitlyn Jenner. Yes, because nailed it. <laughs> well, turnabout's fair play. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of roles going different directions, and Caitlyn's got some wheel time. It was a wheel time. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're going to go a little more acting, a little less wheel experience, and go mm. with uh, Hillary Swank. I was going to say Hillary Swank. Yeah, I was literally about to say Hillary because yeah. they they do look a lot alike, and she would nail that role because she's a fantastic actress. She's great, and look at Janet Guthrie because yeah. I saw the doc on her. Look at her when she was forty years old or thirty five years old. They they are pretty similar. Yeah, in the uh, in the looks department. So I'm, I'm I'm kind of excited about this. First of all, we're a fan of car movies because it does so much for the industry as a whole. Mm-hmm. And now that we've got some good quality films under our belt, you know, Ford v Ferrari and Rush, and you know, a couple of film, you know, Fast and Furious Nine, like some really accurate mm-hmm. good. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, why not have a Hillary Swank Janet Guthrie movie? Yeah, I would watch right? that. Sure, I think that would be good. Uh, the Doc was really good. Doc was really interesting. Did you see that? I didn't see it. I'm, I'm a little bit familiar with her career, but not 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 too much. So I guess I should watch that up. Uh, watch the Doc. I think you'll enjoy it. All right, what else is going on in the uh, car world? Uh, you know, we kind of speculated uh, last week about uh, a Ford Lightning, an all-electric F-150. And then uh, soon after that, um, Ford confirmed it. And the official debut, I think, their virtual presentation is going to be May 19th. Mm-hmm. But they sent out all the teasers and the press release saying this is coming. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be the highest horsepower uh, and quickest F-150 that they've done, mm-hmm. more so than the other Lightning. So that sort of implies sport truck. And But they did say it will power your house. You you will have some sort of plug-in uh, like the Power Boost does, like the Hybrid does. It will be able to tow a significant amount of weight. Um, and it's just going to be kind of everything that you expect an F-150 to be. It as, will as power a, your house. Yeah. What they mean is is, is it'll have – Probably the 110 and the 220 options. All know, electric. All electric, yeah. Hmm. So obviously there's going to be a time limit on, <laughs> on that, like with anything, because it doesn't have that gas engine to, to to kick in when the battery's running low. But Right. Uh, but it is going to have power plugs on it. It's going to be able to tow. It's going to be able to haul stuff. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be quick, and it's going to have uh, a greater range than what we expect is, is sort of what they were implying. Uh, Because they want it to be everything an F-150 should be able to be, right? They don't want to drop the ball on being the best-selling truck for a million years. Going to let Phil out of the studio. (laughs) Is he trying to get out? No, he's just licking his butt. Okay. He's just scratching and rolling around. Oh, okay. Sometimes he hangs out by the door. Yeah, if I see him at the door, I'll kick it open, Bert. And he pulls the acoustic off the door. (laughs) Well, when he wants out, he wants out. The the tearing of the uh, acoustic at the bottom of the doors uh, via fill. So, uh, all right, as long as he's not uh, tearing at anything. Um, Because he's learned to open the trash compartment at my house he's learned it's a slide out variety yeah slides in flush yeah he's figured out how to open it and then demolish all the trash and just get in there and get yeah what yeah and we can't punish him because he's phil so what are you gonna do <laughs> what are you can do? can't train him either because that ship is sailed phil. yeah there's nothing we can do with phil other than tolerate <laughs> phil so i i took him with me today all right so uh Let's see. Spy video of the upcoming Corvette Z06. Yeah. So, you know, the Corvette C8, which you've, you've seen hovering around your, uh, your, your place in Malibu, right? The red mm-hmm. one out there. And it's fantastic. And people are modifying and Lingenfelder's doing a thing and people putting turbos on them, as you would expect. And they're performing great. But we always knew there was going to be hotter versions of this. Sure. So uh, on 
on GM's proving ground, uh, you'll want to hear some of the volume of this. Are they? Sorry for jumping in. Yeah. Are they going racing with this car? They are. So they're 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 developing like a C eight R. Mm-hmm. Right, but because of the limitations, it's going to be you know whatever five hundred horsepower. Mm-hmm. Um, right, you right, know right. you know how they build up yeah, the yeah. engine too much and then they plug it down. You know, like with with limiting the airflow. Yeah, they do in. like restrictions. Yeah. And- so the Z06 is estimated to be about six hundred horsepower, but it's a flat plane crank V8. And when you hear mm-hmm. the video of this thing, because he was doing some acceleration runs, mm-hmm. it, it sounds like a Ferrari. Is it? What's the cam configuration? It's it's uh, that's a good question because the engine now is uh, it's an in in block you know cam. It's not an overhead it's cam. It's a push rod engine. It's a push rod engine. But there was talk about doing you know a flat plane crank overhead cam, uh, nine thousand RPM. Well, well, you know, yeah, Americans have well, not Americans, but some Americans have gone to a mid-engine and they've gone to, you know, higher revving and maybe a little less displacement and uh, possible overhead cams. And now they're getting into this European world. You know, it, it started off that only European cars had disc brakes all the way around and (laughs) only european cars had independent rear suspension and only european cars had or european and or japanese had had overhead cams like i you know i remember you know 1970 240z actually that had drums in the rear i should amend (laughs) that um at some point god how did Z? What would be your guess when Z's went to a disc in the rear? I, I would say two eighty or three hundred, two eighty, probably. I don't think the first gen, you know, first body style yeah. two forty sixty. Maybe the two eighty ZX was the first one to have it in the rear. But the yeah, point is, is, they had independent rear. Yeah. They had discs in the front, and they had an overhead cam, and they had a five speed. Actually, the first Z, I think, had a four-speed. I'm really torpedoing my own point. But the, the point <laughs> is this. Japanese. You had me on European. Yeah, you know. <laughs> well, I was trying to think of a cheaper car that did did that stuff, you know. Yeah. And, um, and American cars, just they stuck with the drums and the straight axles and the push rods. And they weren't going with uh, struts. They were going with shocks, you know. Mm-hmm. And... Mm-hmm. and and then, then it gave way to mid-engine and all that, but they're, they're kind of caught up now. Yeah, it seems like they're getting there. You know, even on on just some of the sports cars, like what we've seen with Camaro and Mustang and things like that. Now, all independent rear suspensions and mod motors, overhead cams, and right and, and DCT transmissions that we're getting, like in GT five hundred and paddle shift everything. Although you could paddle shift a Prius, probably. Yeah, I'm even sure. even <laughs> took a while for like aluminum heads and certainly aluminum blocks. Yeah. Took a while. I don't know if anything has an aluminum block. What American has an aluminum? Is any Mustang? With yeah, a, yeah. Are there aluminum? Oh, yeah. Aluminum. Oh, okay. So yeah. there, we, there we go. And, yeah. and Corvette. Yep. So good. Now uh, now they're in. Then they fixed up their interiors, and uh, now they're world beaters. Well, that Z06, it sounds fantastic, and the performance of the C8 is already really good. So now you've really got to start to step up. But – I, I still assume this is like a hundred thousand dollar car, right? Because the C eight base is you know, base price is it was you know, when it came out it was sixty thousand and then it, I think it crept up a little bit. And uh like uh Edmonds when they bought theirs, they spent like eighty, eighty five thousand for mm-hmm. a nicely equipped mm-hmm. you know, C eight. Mm-hmm. So the O six is probably you know, in that hundred thousand dollar range. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe you can tick off some boxes to get it into the 120, mm-hmm. but I don't think you're going to spend 160 I, unless 
I mean, it doesn't seem like that's what they're trying to do to, to, to jump up, you know, like into like Porsche Turbo S or, you know, kind of supercar territory. I don't think right. they're going to say, hey, the base model is 60,000 and then the Z06 starts at, you know, 175. I don't think they're going to make that huge jump. Mm-hmm. So I would assume it's somewhere around that $100,000 mark. Yeah. Well, again, you know, in a, in a way, in a way, Chevy and Ford have to kind of do what Hyundai and Kia and other manufacturers have to do in their own weird way, which is you have to offer what Audi is offering and then you have to knock off 20% from the sticker Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you'll attract buyers. So, because we're paying for the badge, you know, you, you would pay for the Porsche badge, yeah. pay for the Audi badge, pay for the Mercedes badge, pay for the Ferrari badge. And so what what Ford, in a weird way, with the Mustang and um, Chevy with the Corvette and, and other performance vehicles, what they're doing is basically saying this Corvette can do everything that a Porsche, maybe even a Porsche Turbo or a Ferrari for that number are we on now? 488. 488. Is that what we're on? I think I thought there was well, another there's, one. There, yeah, there's. Well, anyway, the point is, is we can do all that shit. And we're going to knock off 80 grand. Yeah. Or more. And that's kind of their, that's what they're saying. Yeah. I mean, that's where they're at. And yeah. and I I think they're there, right? I they are, especially with with this one, with this new engine and the the flat plane crank, because it'll get you that sound too. With, right. That, that Ferrari had with their V8s. Well, the. You just want you want that note that comes from everything over sixty eight hundred RPM. You know yeah. that's where the sound really kicks in. And you know traditionally American cars were going to sixty eight, sixty six, or whatever, and kind of cutting mm-hmm. it off there. The Ferrari, as we learned from uh, watching Gone in 60 Seconds <laughs> and Duvall yeah. was talking about the Daytona. Oh, yeah. The Daytona at 5,500 5, peak <laughs> RPM. <laughs> it was yep. only 3,000 RPM <laughs> off. <laughs> right. 5,500. If you drove that Daytona at Le Mans and you shifted at 5,500, you would, you, you would have MGs <laughs> MG bug eyed sprites in the in the in, <laughs> La- in, 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 in e production I, beat you. I when did that movie come out? Like two thousand? Was there no Wikipedia back then? How long has the wiki been around? Because if you're writing that script, you could be like, oh, Ferrari Daytona, that's a car I've heard of. What right. do you think the RPM is of that? <laughs> well, are there any car guys involved with this <laughs> production? Because the you know, the Daytona stock Probably red lines back then at seventy four hundred, maybe seventy two hundred yeah. stock. But in yeah. race trim, if you're racing that car, yeah, you're you're shifting at at uh, eighty eighty three hundred. Now you know they tell. Uh, sorry, Le Mans twenty four hour race. So maybe you'd not wind it up quite as much. By the way, I saw a um, Daytona sold over the weekend or whatever for. 500 grand, 525,000 bucks. And it's like, I think we're finally at the place where we can just admit those cars are 500 grand and not a yeah, million. Right, right. I, I, at least I was there three years ago. Every time one goes for sale, that's what you say. <laughs> well, every time it's like the estimate is 775 to 1.1. 1. 1, and it's like, no, it's not. It's 500 grand. Yeah. That's what that car sells for. By the way, I literally just looked up the Daytona on the wiki. And uh, they were just talking about when the car came out. And it's like, yeah, it's got, you know, it's 9.3 to 1 compression, 347 horsepower at 7,500 RPM. I was way off with my 74. Yeah. Now, wait. Did he say peak torque or peak horsepower? Because peak torque does occur at 5,500. Oh, they may have. Did he say? No, because he said... He said, like, red lines or, or maxes out or something, They right? do like torque. Yeah. They like the word torque. I don't know. Now Max so Now you got to find the clip. Now you got to find the clip. <laughs> and then edit this whole section out of the show, maybe. <laughs> you got to find the clip from Gone in 60 Seconds, the good version. 
<laughs> the real version. <laughs> then also we're going to need the clip where um, he's making out with stacks or yeah. sway, sway, sway bar. Or sway. Torsion. <laughs> Torsion. <laughs> he's torsion. making out and they're going, linkage. <laughs> oh, Synchro mesh. Synchro mesh. <laughs> jetting. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, vacuum. Advance <laughs> magnetos. <laughs> all right, do your business. Yeah, all right. Let me tell you guys about Empire Covers. You know, nowadays car nowadays cars are designed to keep you safe on the road, but are you providing the same protection for your car off the road? Well, Empire Covers has you covered. Literally, high quality, affordable covers engineered to protect against rain, UV rays, tree sap, pollen, pretty much anything that damages your vehicle paint. And for premium protection, try the American Armor Cover. It's proudly made in their Kentucky factory, and they have it available for RVs, boats, motorcycles, and more. All covers come with a free multi-year warranty. And here's the deal. Free shipping plus 15% off your entire order with promo code CARCAST. That's empirecovers.com slash CARCAST. Use promo code CARCAST at checkout. Empire Covers. Protect what you love. All right. So we'll let Max Pata find that clip. We must have it somewhere. I've made fun of it uh, 33,000 times. Yeah, we, I, I have it. I'll Are you doing? All right. While he's looking that up, I got a little bit. Here's Phil back there. He was Phil's back. Him here. He's, he's Roman. He's, he's behind you now. Okay. Oh, wait a uh, minute. We got the clip. All right. Here we go. Oh, well, oh this wait. Is this, the, is, this is the other. Yeah. This is the. This clip's good. The, yeah. But you got to find the one with Duvall. Yeah, but you got to find the one with Robert Duvall too when he's listening to the radio. You know, to the the, yeah. Okay. I had a girl once. She was great. She was so great. Why'd you leave her? Crash and burn. (laughs) Uh, See, we need to talk and car talk all the time, man. All the time. If I say to you, like, how's your relationship with your mom going? You go, can't get any traction in the rear wheels because we're car guys. <laughs> and we I, need to talk that way. I feel like we've just been on cruise control this whole time. Yeah. It's getting boring. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see people get hurt. I just want you to slow down. You slow no, down. Good. There you go. Yeah. Because I wasn't ready. You're straight now. Yeah, I am because it wasn't the same without you. She got out of the business. Mm hmm. It's going to get her back in. Yeah. That was she the first. Was that was going to start making out. No later. part of this. There's no part of that that worked out. <laughs> he does talk about triple Webbers, I think. I think more exciting having in, sex. In there, which I appreciate as a Dotson guy. <laughs> um. Oof. Well, uh, I'm take out my dipstick. How about <laughs> sex? Well, boosting cars. Yeah, that's a good line. Eh, it's Ooh, not that great. That's that's pretty, that's pretty, that's I'd say cross. I, that's a I'm Me just, Too moment. Well, right. <laughs> but you haven't answered the question. She's going to. Well, you see, the problem is. How do you get over the shift? Oh. Oh, right, because the... Because uh, it gets in the way. Because you you wouldn't want to disrupt the uh, synchro mesh, right? Yeah. Or <laughs> throttle linkage. Throttle linkage. What's that got to do with the throttle linkage? <laughs> the clutch master cylinder. Master cylinder, whoa. whoa. You can't say can't that. Say that There's anymore. a slave cylinder. <laughs> Double overhead camshaft. Yeah. <laughs> Straight in like six. Yeah. Triple Weber carburetor. Triple Webers. Triple Webers. That got you a phoner, didn't it? Yeah. Especially when Nick Cage says it. <laughs> All right. We got it. Now we now it's we just, hot here. We need uh I know, look at Phil, he's all worked up back there. We need to uh now find the uh Duval. The, the, that's that's and maybe he says peak torque. If he says peak torque but I think he says right red line. It. I think he does, too. But they like torque, and they like uh, red line. All right. Uh, let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back, and we'll play that clip right after this.
Let me tell you guys about Dodge. You know, Dodge has officially opened orders on their new 2021 Durango SRT Hellcat. It's the most powerful SUV ever. It's uh, it's pretty crazy. It's exclusive for 2021. It's got 2,000 horsepower. I'm sorry, 2,000 units will be made, 710 horsepower. It's got this new aggressive exterior styling and a new interior styling with a driver-centric cockpit. And if, uh, if you can't find the Hellcat, you could definitely get the RT, which is also the big V8 version. And uh, But every uh, buyer of the Hellcat version gets a full day of pro instruction at the Radfield, Rad, Radford mm-hmm. High Performance Driving School, formerly Bondurant. Uh, you know, when Dodge was ranked number one in initial quality and best driver appeal by mass market brands, uh, in mass market bands by J.D. Power. It's number one in quality and appeal in the same year. So see your local Dodge dealer or visit Dodge.com today to schedule a test drive. All right. Let me hit uh, Geico. Do you own, do you rent your home? Well, you do one or the other, right? And you want to save some money and you want to get your bundle going. Geico makes it easy to bundle your homeowners or renters insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you already already have so much to do around the home. So go to Geico.com, get a quote, see just how much you could save when you go with Geico.com. Visit Geico.com today and get your bundle going at Geico.com. All right, back with CarCast. Uh, Matt over there, Phil behind me, taking a nap. Yep. And uh, <laughs> we'll see if we can uh, come up with that uh, with that clip. You drove the uh, RC Moto, Ar- Arky Moto, Arky Moto, yeah, Arky Moto. Yeah, it's this uh, it's this three wheeler electric vehicle, and uh, it was a little interesting, kind of around town. Um, you know, on the west side out here, it feels more like. You know, great for like Catalina or an mm-hmm. island or whatever. Mm-hmm. But this uh, company builds them, um, Oregon, I believe. Mm-hmm. It's like a hundred and six mile range. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it does about seventy five miles an hour, and you could see two people tandem, one behind the other, mm-hmm. and they make it so it has a kind of a like a roll bar that goes above you, and then mm-hmm. just clear acrylic, mm-hmm. so you don't need a helmet. Mm-hmm. They're, they have a Roadster version that's coming out, which mm-hmm. is more like a three wheeled motorcycle. So you would have to wear a helmet for that. Mm-hmm. But it is kind of interesting. It was it was fun to play around with. Um, I posted some some images of it, and uh, uh, some people thought it was cool. Some people wanted to make fun of me for driving it around town. Um, but it's it's interesting in that they're they're going to be able to modify this chassis, right, this platform that it's on for all sorts of things. So if you want to deliver stuff or do like last mile Amazon delivery or deliver pizzas, like there's some, you know, sort of this uh, uh, utility version of it as well. That's kind of cool. But, um, you know, it was it was fun to to, to ride around on for a day. Uh, they start at about 17 grand and, and kind of go up a bit from there. I don't know what the UTVs cost, like you know, like what Stone Cold Steve Austin runs around on his ranch on the whole time. Those things got to be pretty expensive as well. The big gas engine versions. I um, I've seen those things a lot. I mean, versions, those sort of three wheel whatever things around a lot. It's kind of a weird. It's kind of a weird conceit because. I mean, I think it's people just kind of want to be seen in something different and, you know, I'm all, I'm all for it, but just sitting in traffic on PCH, like, <laughs> yeah, I rode a motorcycle for a while and, you know, it's like, you guys know how I drive a car. Like I go through arrows, yeah. I split stuff, I slide in, I'm, I'm always trying to shave a few tents, right, you know, right. I don't really drive aggressively but i drive with like a purpose and i had some of the best handling motorcycles ever made i had ninja 600s and i had a honda 404 and the bars are clipped they're the clip kind of bars you know not like Mm -hmm. the handlebars they clip on the ninja 600 those bars were clipped on at their widest point couldn't have been more than 17 18 18, 20 inches. I mean, it, yeah. it was narrow. The bike was narrow. It was handled so well. It was really yeah. compact. And I just split traffic all. There was mm-hmm. no such thing as traffic. You wouldn't even factor anything in. Just right yeah, just through. Go. Split everything all the time. 
surface streets, you know, pull up to a light on Wilshire and the cars were backed up 18 cars right to the front, like every time. And the thing about the three wheel bike is you, you do eliminate, you, you kind of have some of the danger yeah. minus any of the lane splitting. <laughs> you kind of do. This one's a tandem configuration, so it is thinner than sort of the side-by-side three-wheelers. Um, but, yeah, you don't quite get it there. You get a little bit, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, when you're turning right and the cars are lined up, yeah, you can yeah. kind of get into that bike lane sort of area and pass them. Um but and, and a lot of people look at you because it draws kind of attention, and you know. But on the other hand, it, it is electric, so it's very quiet, so nobody really hears you. They just kind of when you know, they can kind of see you when you get in front of them. So, uh, for me, it seemed it seemed cool, uh, but it seemed like you know, on a big property, a resort, on an island somewhere, yeah, just yeah. something like yeah, something not, a little like that. Not stuck in not stuck in traffic. All yeah. right, Max Zapata, do we have, did we find that scene? Oh, here we go. All right, let's see. He's listening to a tape of uh, a Daytona. Yeah, this is the only clip. It's really short. It just loops. But it's, at Lamar. Yeah, the scene you're talking about. The Ferrari 365 GTB4 Daytona. Le Mans 1971. The Ferrari. So oh, he doesn't say the punchline. I know, I know. That's all I could find. There's got to be something. Wait out there. a minute. Come on now, Max Bata. There's got to be we've, something. We've, we've, we've seen gotten it. into this a yeah, few times. It's got to be there. That, but it's, I, it's not. The scene isn't on. Fetch. Right now. <laughs> Go find it. <laughs> Phil didn't even move his head when Phil I yelled even, at him. He, he didn't even pick up his head. He passed out he out there. Care. All right, well, he looks for that. I he got doesn't this. know from Fetch. It's out there somewhere. I'm looking still. Come on, Ryan's going to find it. Ask Gary. Gary probably has it somewhere on his computer or something. All right, sorry, go ahead. Uh, uh, Something you brought up last week that I experienced on the way here, sort of, a a little bit of a gripe. I've been driving this new uh, Audi Q7, the SUV. Slam the brakes on. Yes, this goddamn thing on the way here. I this wasn't like driving back, you know, backing up like you were talking about. I was I was over here by the shop, and I was making a left turn, and somebody was kind of coming toward me, but they were darting over to get into their left turn lane. Mm-hmm. So I started going forward, and this thing hit the brakes in the middle of the intersection so goddamn hard, all my shit flew and hit the dash, and now I feel like I'm going to die because... I'm stopped in the middle of the intersection. Right. Like, what? what is going on with with, with this? You know, it's funny because a friend of mine had uh, the Bentley SUV, mm-hmm. which is owned by Audi, Porsche, whatever. And he kept saying, this thing's going to kill me. It stops in the middle of the intersection when you're making a left-hand turn. Right. Right? Because even though the cars are far away, when they're coming at you and you cross in front of them, the car gets scared and it stops. And he goes, the danger is stopping in the intersection. You you don't know what to do. Right. Right? He literally got rid of that thing and, like, traded it in for, I don't know, Rolls Royce or, or Porsche Macan or, or whatever, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, he's like, I just, I, they told me I can't turn it off. I was like, that seems crazy. There's got to be a way to turn it off. So now I'm curious if anybody who's experiencing this, like in the Audis, I'm sure other vehicles do it as well, but the Audis and the Bentleys are something that's going on. This thing jammed on the brakes in the middle of the intersection and just left me in the intersection for a couple of seconds. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I get it. Imagine if 110 pound Phil was in the car <laughs> roaming around in the back seat. Oh yeah, he'd come right through that windshield. And yeah, I dumped coffee all over the place because it just jammed the brake on, just yeah. backing out. The, the, what for me it was kind of the randomness of it. I've done that move 80 times. It never jammed the brake on, and this one time it just jammed it. I, but yeah, I. I, there's got to be a way to not jam it. There, on. There, and yeah, but backing up is one thing. I get it, like what you were what you were doing. But this is the left hand turn, and there's so right. much traffic typically in LA. Yeah, yeah. Like you have to go. Like if no, you I, don't, people behind you are honking. Like you got to go, or traffic's I, never I going agree. to move. I don't see anyone in that booth like Max Zapata, but <laughs> I don't know can where everybody you find, went. They all uh, just left. <laughs> we're looking oh, for that scene. We got well, three let, guys let, on it right now. <laughs> Let uh, Ryan find it. You find 
the uh, speaking of this, that you brought up the Bentley, brought up the SUV, brought up that uh, Genesis. I saw a couple of Genesis, the new SUV, yeah, uh, made by Genesis or Hyundai yeah, yeah. or whatever. It looked really yeah. good. Well, from that's the, outside. the Tiger Woods one. It is that the Tiger Woods that's one? That's the new one. Yeah, the new Genesis SUV. I think it's G seventy or something. Or I yeah. have a GV eighty. Yeah, GV eighty. There you go. That's the Tiger one. I saw one in um, a great color. You know, it's a great color in a car like that. That eggplant, that really dark maroon kind oh, yeah. of color. Yeah, looked really good. I don't know. It's got a V eight in there. I had, I didn't really go look at the interior, but it's it's a good looking piece. It's it's got a lot of Bentley in it, and for eighty grand, seems like a lot of SUV. You know, that's kind of the color that I'm driving of right now of the uh, the SQ seven, the Audi. It's that color, and yeah. you know, and the S version is the four liter turbo. So it's and it's I got to say that. Uh, uh, sorry, the Hyundai. Genesis, yeah. Uh, uh, the Hyundai. Uh, they don't want you to call it Hyundai. Sorry. They no, no, no. No, I'm talking about the Tucson. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the Hyundai. Yeah. That was a ton of car. We went and did a shoot over whatever two weeks ago. The 2022 was a lot of car for like 23, 26 grand. Like, yeah. It was, they're, they've, up their game quite a bit. I, I tell you, one of one of the the standout car company is is you know whatever the joint venture or, or relationship between Kia and Hyundai. Those two companies have been really making moves. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the Kia Telluride is one of the highest reviewed SUVs, and the Genesis is basically uh, you know the fancier version of that platform, that architecture. So yeah. Um, yeah, I'm I'm excited to get into that uh, the big uh, Genesis SUV and see how that thing is. But you're right; it's a good it's it's a good looking vehicle. It looks good. And, it looks big, it, it looks good in person, mm-hmm. and um, it's a good size. You know, it's not Escalade big, and um, it looks this looks like a lot of car. The the cars, the Genesis cars that I drove, I thought were great. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. All right, uh, what do you got, Rhino? Can't find it. Hmm. A lot, of, a lot of like, a lot of they sites scrubbed have been it. I think they scrubbed down it. on like copyright infringement and putting free clips up online. I mean, yeah, I they scrubbed it because they were it's wrong. Like four bucks to rent, but I don't know if you'd be okay with that. <laughs> no. I don't yeah. think it's worth four bucks. Yeah. Well, well, somebody has the clip somewhere. Someone will. Yeah. Somebody tweet it to me or or us or the show and right. uh, and let us know. Somebody's got it at home on their DVD, <laughs> and they're just going to fire up their iPhone and post the clip for us. That yes. would be good. Just uh, so, because I'm not going to be able to sleep until that's done. <laughs> speaking of watching good stuff, uh, Netflix has that Formula One Drive to Survive series. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've been checking that out. Uh, no. I have. It's really amazing. I mean, it's it's really well shot. It, you know, they do a new storyline every. Every year or every every episode, it's got a storyline and it's really interesting. I mean, it's it's you know it's basically a soap opera that is for, with Formula One is is the backdrop. It's it's really compelling stuff. Is it historical or is it follows no, like it's, modern? It's all it's all yeah. modern. And I wasn't really that into modern F one, but. Uh, Really interesting stories, the stories of the drivers, the stories of the constructors, the stories of the engine builders and all the crazy competition. Yeah. It's a really compelling show. And they shoot it like um, Top Gear. I mean, the, they must have an amazing budget because it, it is incredibly well shot. So, yeah. Well, in F1, uh, Lewis Hamilton, I think, just scored his 100th win. Which is Im- impressive. Yeah, and Schumacher's son is now coming in to drive for Ferrari. Yeah, I heard uh, that he was climbing the ranks in that. He was climbing the ranks in uh, F2, and now I'm pretty sure that Scuderia Ferrari has signed him up. So he's going to be driving against Lewis Hamilton uh, in theory, with Ferrari this upcoming year. All right, let me tell you about uh, Meguiar's. Over the last few years, Meguiar's launched a next generation of protective products specifically geared toward DIYers. Hybrid, 
ceramic spray wax. We all know about that. Bright blue bottle. Advanced SiO2 hybrid technology delivers ceramic wax protection and durability beyond traditional wax. Meguiar's hybrid ceramic liquid wax. Long-lasting ceramic protection and an easy-to-use wax. Hybrid ceramic spray detailer for the in-between boost maintenance. Uh, love this stuff. Dust, fingerprints, bird droppings, and um, weirdly those weird insect droppings. Ooh. This year, they've expanded to include a new hybrid ceramic wash and wax. Bright orange bottle, unique two liquid system together in one bucket. McGuire's has a hybrid ceramic solution for everybody. Ceramic well, it's made easy with Meguiar's. All right. What else you got? I don't know if you heard this news, but, um, you know, we talked about Gordon Murray and his T50 supercar with the big fan in the mm-hmm. back. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not really sure what, what he's been doing with that company. I'm sure somebody has been digging into that a, a lot more, maybe just engineering, consulting, design consulting. And then he made this car. But it sounds like they've got a lot of things in store. They just did a big round of funding, three hundred million dollars, three hundred million pounds uh, of 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 funding That's poured into that company. Um, four hundred million bucks or something. Which is, uh, yeah, that's a big investment for them. So maybe different variations of the T fifty, maybe another car at some point, but. Uh, Maybe uh, one you know, they can get over thirty three hundred RPM. Yeah, maybe, when they test maybe, it. maybe they can. Yeah. Do you think they'll ever make a car that weighs more than three thousand? No pounds. No. No, but we put <laughs> Phil in it. <laughs> yeah, put Phil in it. <laughs> Wait, is that a three seater? No. What's oh, the configuration? T fifty. I think Sit it in the middle? is. I think it is a three. Like his F one. Yeah. Of your. Yeah, I think that is, and it's got to be small though, right? It's got to be a small car. Yeah, yeah. The T fifty is a three seater. It, do you? I think we're going to see this car this year. I can't imagine this car not showing up at Monterey. Do you? Are you sit in the middle and there's seats on both sides? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Put the wife and the girlfriend in there. Well, why not? Wow. Yeah. I hope it shows up. Right. It's it gonna has show to be. Up. Right. It, it has, has to. to. Like. I mean, they're they're taking orders for it. They're. Wrapping up all the testing, something has to show up. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll look forward to that. We'll keep you posted. Uh, You can see me in Los Angeles jamming the van. That's May 22nd. That's coming up. We'll do a live pod there. Then we go to Golden, Colorado, Buffalo Rose, June 18th, 19th. And uh, just go to amcrawl.com for all the live shows. Our chassis channel on Pluto TV is uh, now on uh, channel 687, no sp- safe spaces available on the Amazon Prime. And we're getting more Adam Pearls going racing up on our Pluto TV channel real soon. Like we just finished the color correction, the sound mix, and all that stuff. So there should be more episodes coming. What do you got, man? Yeah, just check me out at Motorator on social media. I'll continue to, to post some stuff and chat with you guys. So, till next time, Adam Carolla for Phil and Matt the Motorator, DeAndrea saying keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. Hey, movie lovers, who needs a theater when you have Pluto TV? Grab your popcorn and your streaming device because free movies are here. Pluto TV is your home for movies. Great movies are playing anytime in over 20 exclusive movie channels of action, horror, rom-coms, and more. Watch hits like Saving Private Ryan, Pretty in Pink, and Charlie's Angels all for free. No signups, no fees, no contracts. Ever. Download the free Pluto TV app on any device. Hey, Geico, do you own? Do you rent? Well, you do one or the other, right? You know, it's hard work out there. Owning, renting, you want to save some money? How about your bundle? 
bundle your policies at Geico. Geico makes it easy to bundle the homeowners or renters insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing too because you got so much to do already. Go to geico.com, get a quote, see just how much you could save at Geico. That is geico.com today. That's geico.com.